Hello students, welcome to our channel Learning Notebook. In today's video, we are going to do complete chapter of ratio for class 5. In this chapter, we are going to discuss each and every concept related to ratio. So make sure you watch the entire video. But before starting with this chapter, let me tell you that we have made videos on every chapter of class 5 mathematics. We also have interesting worksheets and quizzes on each chapter. You can find all of them on our channel Learning Notebook. So let's see what all topics we are going to cover today in this video. First we will understand what is ratio. Then we will learn how to write ratio in simplest form. Next we will do some questions on ratio. We will also do some difficult questions on ratio. And then in the end I will give you a worksheet for your practice. So let's start and first understand what is ratio. To understand ratio, we need to understand a simple story. These two boys, Jay and Vijay, used to receive chocolates from their mother. But mother always used to give two chocolates to Jay and three chocolates to Vijay. So, the ratio of number of chocolates J got to number of chocolates Vijay got is written as 2 is to 3 or we can say 2 divided by 3. So, this ratio 2 is to 3 describes number of chocolates J got to number of chocolates Vijay got. Now, suppose next day also the mother gave two chocolates to J and three chocolates to Vijay. Now, count number of chocolates each of them have got. J has 4 chocolates and Vijay has 6. So the ratio now becomes 4 is to 6 or we can call it as 4 by 6. Now next day again the mother gave 2 more chocolates to Jay and 3 more chocolates to Vijay. So now both of them have got how many chocolates? J has got 6 chocolates and Vijay has got 9 chocolates. So what is the ratio now? Yes, the ratio has become 6 is to 9 or 6 by 9. Now students, look carefully at these two ratios. 4 is to 6 and 6 is to 9. Both these ratios, when simplified, they become 2 by 3. So, on each day, the ratio of chocolates 2 by 3 remains the same. This means J will always have chocolates in multiples of 2 and Vijay will always have chocolates in multiple of 3 and not just 2 chocolates and 3 chocolates. Some of the students have the confusion that the ratio 2 is to 3 means that J will always have two chocolates and Vijay will always have three chocolates. But 
this is not the case. We have seen that if Jay has four chocolates, then Vijay will have six chocolates because the ratio of their chocolates is two is to three. Now, students, if I say on fourth day, Jay has eight chocolates. Look at these eight chocolates. Then Vijay will have how many chocolates? Yes, twelve chocolates. Because their chocolates are always in the ratio of two is to three. So students do remember that ratio will not tell you the exact quantity, but ratio is the comparison or relationship of quantities. So from this story, we have learned that ratio is a fraction which denotes the relationship between two quantities of same type. Students, do remember that ratio is comparison of quantities of same type. Ratio is denoted as colon which is read as is to. In general, ratio is expressed as A is to B or A by B where A and B are the quantities which are of same kind. Now, let's learn terms of ratio. Consider the ratio A is to B. Here, A and B are called the terms of the ratio. And remember, A is known as the antecedent. So, first term that is A is called as antecedent and the second term which is B is called as consequent. Now another important point to remember is that order of terms in a ratio is very important. For example, ratio 2 is to 3 is entirely different from ratio 3 is to 2. Students, this means ratio 2 is to 3 is a different ratio and ratio 3 is to 2 is an entirely different ratio. Both of them are not equal. So, in general, we will say A is to B is not equal to B is to A. If you still not have subscribed to our channel Learning Notebook, then do subscribe it and make sure to press the bell icon. Students, we would like to tell you that we have made videos on every chapter of class 4, class 5 and class 6 mathematics. We also have interesting maths quizzes, worksheets, working models, activities and projects on each chapter. So I would suggest you to check out our channel Learning Notebook. Now we will learn how to write the ratio in simplest form. If in the ratio A is to B, both the terms have no common factor other than one, then the ratio is in its simplest form.
Let's understand this with the help of an example. Given ratio is 15 is to 20 or we can say 15 by 20. Here students, we can clearly see that both the terms of this ratio have common factor 5. So, we will say this ratio is not in its simplest form. So, let's see how to simplify it. To simplify the ratio, we will divide both numerator as well as denominator by common factor 5. We get 3 by 4. Or we can call it as 3 is to 4. Now, this ratio 3 is to 4 is in its simplest form because both the terms have no common factor other than 1. Let's do one more question. Write 48 is to 84 in the simplest form. Now here we can clearly see that both the terms have common factor 2. So let's divide numerator and denominator by 2. We get 24 by 42. Again, they have common factor 2. So let's divide them by 2. We get 12 by 21. Now, these two terms have common factor 3. So, on dividing them by 3, we get 4 by 7. Now, students, look at these two terms carefully. They have no common factor other than 1. So, 4 is to 7 is the simplest form of 48 is to 84. Now, we will do questions on finding ratio. Question 1 is, There are 20 girls and 30 boys in a class. A part is, find the ratio of number of girls to number of boys. So, here we are given with number of girls as well as number of boys in a class and we have to find their ratio. So, let's first write the statements. Number of girls equals to 20. Number of boys equals to 30. So, ratio of number of girls to number of boys would be 20 is to 30. Now, this ratio 20 is to 30 is not in its simplest form. Both the terms have common factor 10. So, let's simplify it. Divide both numerator and denominator by 10. We get 2 by 3, which is in the simplest form. So, we have got the ratio of number of girls to number of boys as 2 is to 3. Let's do B part of this question. Find the ratio of number of girls to number of students. Now, here we have to find the ratio of number of girls to number of students. So, let's solve it. First, we will write the statements. Number of girls equals to 20. Next, we have to write 
number of students which means we have to find total students in the class which is nothing but the sum of number of girls as well as number of boys so number of students equals to 20 plus 30 which is equals to 50 now let's write the ratio of number of girls to number of students which is equals to 20 is to 50 now students this ratio is not in its simplest form so let's simplify it and we get the ratio as 2 is to 5 next question is find the ratio of 30 minutes to 1.5 hours now students here we have to find the ratio of minutes to hours so it means both the quantities are not of same type first one is in minutes and second one is in hours so let's convert hours into minutes we know 1 hour equals to 60 minutes so 1.5 hours would be equal to 60 multiplied by 1.5 minutes now 1.5 can be written as 15 by 10 so we get 60 into 15 by 10 simplify it and we get the answer as 90 minutes so we have converted 1.5 hours into 90 minutes now students both the quantities are of same type both of them are in minutes now so this means 30 minutes to 1.5 hours which is asked in the question is equals to 30 minutes to 90 minutes now the ratio will be 30 by 90 which is not in its simplest form so simplify it and we get the ratio as 1 is to 3 so students now i'm sure you have understood how to find the ratio students we would like to tell you that we have a separate video on complete chapter of simple interest for class 5 in this video you can learn what is simple interest what are the terms related to simple interest and then how to solve questions on simple interest the link to this video is here on the top and below in the description box now we will do some difficult questions on ratio question is the ratio of tin and zinc in an alloy is 3 is to 4 if there is 21 grams of alloy find the quantity of tin and zinc now let's see how to solve this question ratio of tin and zinc is given as 3 is to 4 so what is the meaning of this ratio it means if total 7 grams of alloy is there in that alloy 3 grams of tin is present and 4 grams of zinc is present so let's write sum of the ratio is 
plus 4 equals to 7. It means in 7 grams of alloy, 3 grams of tin is present. Then in 1 gram of alloy, quantity of tin present equals to 3 by 7. Similarly, in 1 gram of alloy, quantity of zinc present equals to 4 by 7. Now students, we have to find quantity of tin present in 21 grams of alloy. For this, we will do 3 by 7 into 21. Simplify this and we get 3 into 3 which is equals to 9 grams. So this means 9 grams of tin is present in 21 grams of alloy. Similarly, we have to find quantity of zinc present in 21 grams of alloy. So let's do 4 by 7 into 21. On simplification, we get 4 into 3 which is equals to 12 grams. So students, we will write the answer statement. There is 9 grams of tin and 12 grams of zinc present in 21 grams of alloy. Now the last question is, a certain sweet recipe calls for 3 kilogram of sugar for every 6 kilogram of flour. If 60 kilogram of this sweet needs to be prepared, then how much sugar is required? Now let's solve this question. We are given ratio of sugar and flour in the sweet is 3 kilogram is to 6 kilogram or we can say 3 is to 6. Now sum of this ratio is 3 plus 6 equals to 9. This means to prepare 9 kilogram of sweets, we need 3 kilograms of sugar and 6 kilograms of flour. So students, to prepare 1 kilogram of sweet, quantity of sugar required will be 3 by 9. So, in 60 kilograms of sweet, quantity of sugar required will be 3 by 9 into 60. Simplify this and we get 20 kilograms. So, it means if 60 kilogram of sweet needs to be prepared, then 20 kilogram of sugar is required. Students, we also have a separate video on perimeter area and volume for class 5. In this video, you can learn about perimeter of triangle, square and rectangle. Then you can also understand area of square and rectangle. And then volume of cube and cuboid. I'm sure all your doubts would be resolved after watching this comprehensive video. You will find its link here on the top and below in the description box. Now, in the end, I'm giving you a worksheet for your practice. Students, this worksheet contains questions from all the sections of the chapter which we have just learned. If you have skipped 
any of the section i will suggest you to first understand that section and then attempt this worksheet do watch my other videos and share my channel and my videos with your friends and family thanks for watching see you in the next video bye bye